Welcome to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast, powered by LPT Realty, real estate reimagined, with your host, the one and only Betsy Tinnerbin. On this podcast, we bring you people who share their personal journeys in life, business, and of course, real estate. Get motivated, inspired, and priceless information from entrepreneurs, community leaders, and realtors who are thriving. Now let's get raw and real. Here's Betsy. Welcome to the LPT All-Star Radio Show, and I am your host, Betsy Tinnervin. Back this week, I was covered by my partner in crime, Vincent Curie, while I was out with COVID. And today, if you are a realtor, if you are wanting to get into real estate, you do not want to miss today's episode because as everybody knows her, the short-term rental queen, the hotel renovator, the number one, Stacey Conti is my guest today. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So everybody knows, super blessed. I definitely have Stacy on the show today as a guest. She is a partner in doing some developments with me, but we have some really great things for all of our LPT agents and any agent out there that's thinking about getting into real estate, wants to also sell investments and get into the biggest space. What What's the big hot topic, Stace? Short-term rentals. So we have some hot things coming up. I want to talk to all real estate agents out there because I think the story of how Stacy and I met is so interesting. I tell all the agents that I personally teach and train that it's so important to represent yourself well because it's like your mom always says, you never know who's watching. <laughs> so how did we meet, Stacy? So Betsy was the listing agent on a multifamily property that I purchased. So I went with my agent at the time, who was also my boyfriend. Don't suggest that anymore. We don't, uh, we don't do business in the front <laughs> party in the back. We just do business now. But we went to go check out the property and I come in and like, this lady's just like doing all this construction stuff and like, we need to do this, 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 and this. And, and I was like, damn, like, this is so cool. Like she knows what she's doing. And so the, the property was amazing and, and she had bought it from, it was a wholesale. wholesale yeah. Right? Yeah. And so they, her and her partner at the time were fixing it to flip it to me. So that was really cool. Cause I, I got to kind of understand like how she was able to go through that process. And I was still able to purchase it with a great return and the property since how but then, it, then, worth? then, like fast forward, we have a meeting about property management. You still decide to use your realtor. You go buy another property with him, mm -hmm. and I get this frantic call from her six, seven months later, <laughs> and she's hysterical. She's about to close. She's like, "Betsy, I had lunch with you. I don't know if you remember me. I'm about to close on this deal. My agent is horrible. They've not collected rents. I have no keys. I know you're not going to get paid. Can you help me?" Yeah, and and he was like, he also didn't show up to closing. And I said, <laughs> I'm here. And so for everybody knows, Stacey became my biggest client. And anybody knows my history. I moved from south of Chicago to Florida. I had to rebuild my business. Even though I had 10 years of experience, I had nobody. I had no trainers, nothing. So here I have this girl who is ready to go in the real estate industry. She kind of needs me and I kind of need her. And she became one of my biggest, you became one of my biggest clients. Aww. You like <laughs> helped me build a book of business. I got put on the map as this multi family commercial chick. So I really want to talk about you today. And I really want you to talk to agents on a perception, but I first want you to just start off with the factor of how you got into real estate and what your niche focus is, because I think it's really cool. It's really inspiring. And I definitely want the show to, to, to touch other people today. Yeah. Yeah. So I got, I started in real estate. I was I was, I guess, kind of like dabbling, you know, whether it was I, I moved and I would rent my previous home. And then with my husband at the time, we started buying rental properties for our staff to live in. So there was, it, it wasn't a, a true real estate venture. It was more just kind of dabbling. So I didn't know anything about lending. I didn't really know anything about being a landlord. It was kind of all just fly by night. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. And when I got divorced, we divided up our, our assets and I had to refinance to put 
the properties into my name. And I had these three townhomes in Georgia. They were rented out to long-term renters. And when I refinanced, I was no longer, I, there was no cash flow. It was negative. I didn't want to sell them because I saw the location was great. They were new construction. They were really cool properties. So I was like, how can I make these cash flow? And so as the leases were up, I furnished them and I started doing corporate rentals and that was going really well. And then, but I would have gaps in between the corporate rentals. So like they'd come in for a couple months at a time and then the next one wouldn't come in for another couple months. So I had gaps. So and you were still just kind of learning on your own. Yeah. Like there I was had, no it, manual. No, this was really before like Airbnb was like trendy. So there was no, there, the resources weren't available and I, I was just trying to like educate myself with books and everything, but I was really figuring it all out as I went along. And so I put them up on Airbnb in, in those gaps and they started booking up really well. So I kind of got my feet wet with how to manage short-term rentals, how to work with housekeeping, how to work with maintenance, all the things. And you that, actually were housing some military people, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So in those Georgia. were my corporate rentals. There's a government training facility in the town next door, which is not really a place where, you know, very high paid professionals want to stay. So they come to the island, which is St. Simon's Island in Georgia. So it's a, a big destination for Atlanta people to go to, to, to vacation. And so it's very charming. There's a lot of golf there. There's a private airport. It's like a really cool. But you were really crushing it with those townhouses. I mean, really you inherit these properties. You kind of get your feet wet with short-term rentals, but you just took an all out plunge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was all <laughs> while you also were working a full-time sales job. Yeah. Yeah. So I got four when we divided the assets, I had four. I kept the three townhomes in Georgia, which I'm, I'm still operating now as short-term rentals. I think I ha we had them rented out for like 12 or 1300 each. And I get up to like 6,300 in the peak seasons now each per month. So short-term rentals, there's such a, such more opportunity to cash. But flow. you always discount everything else you're doing. You have three kids. Yeah. How old are they? <laughs> Six, seven, and nine. And you had a full-time job. Yeah. And I, not only did you have a full-time job, but you were the number one sales rep for Alcon in the country. Yeah. When I resigned, I was ranked number one. They they decided not to give me a raise while I was ranked number one. Out of 275 people. Yeah. And the, the, the gentleman is actually in the Tampa area, so... I wonder if he's listening. <laughs> and so you were doing a full-time gig, jumped into short-term rental, freshly divorced, single mom, and you jumped into real estate. Yeah, real estate I saw as, so I kind of, when I got divorced, you're like, it's so overwhelming. You know, I, I was, I was, we were in a very a position of wealth and I never had to really worry about I worked because I, I enjoyed working, but then shifting to kind of being on your own, it's a whole new level of like taking control of your life. And I had to like decide what did I want my life to look like? Corporate served me well for a long time, but I knew I wanted to get out of it because I wanted more freedom and flexibility. So I, I kind of reverse engineered and said like, okay, well, this is where I want to be. How can I get there? And I couldn't get there by working corporate and just like saving money. Like I wouldn't be able to retire and three or four years. So I, I saw real estate as the vehicle to get me to where I wanted to be. So for everybody listening, the next three segments are going to be the juiciest information you've ever had. What's funny is, is before we wrap up the first segment, Stacey, you actually were friends with Robert Palmer on Facebook. Yeah, I, I was so. actually <laughs> jealous because you got to be friends with Robert Palmer. And I said, how are you friends with Robert Palmer? He has no friend requests left, but you're his friend. <laughs> so Stacey also follows like all the big time people on Facebook. And I definitely want to wrap up this segment just by you telling everybody how important it is to find a good real estate agent. If you are jumping into real estate, why is using an agent important? I mean, that's really everything because your agent is going to be the person that finds you deals, brings you deals, negotiates for you, protects you in the transactions. And it's it's really one of those areas where it's all about 
who you know and you have to know the right people and be connected with the right people. So I, I see deals. All I do all day is look at deals. Perfect. I think that for anyone out there listening with LPT, you guys are valuable people for people like Stacy. For any people wanting to jump into real estate, Stacy Conti, how would someone get a hold of you? Facebook, Stacy Conti. And she is S T A C E Y. C-O-N-T-E. She is the Facebook Instagram queen. But give him your cell phone. 904-563-3462. Don't forget to tune in after the break. All LPT people, we have a huge surprise for you. We're doing a big training hosted by Vince Acuri and Ellie Lambert in their office featuring Stacy Conti. See you after the break. We're going to catch a couple commercials. Don't forget to download the iHeartRadio app. Catch you on the next segment. The best comp plans ever in, in stock and revenue share, but if, if we're not closing real estate transactions, all of that is worthless because ultimately everything starts with a real estate transaction, which starts with a consumer. And so we wanted to arm our agents with the absolute best technology and best marketing tools to do more real estate. And that's, again, I think a big differentiator. I think very few brokerages really sit down and say, how do we provide tools to make sure that our agents can be more productive, sell more real estate, win more listings, win at more listing appointments, help more buyers find that home. And we're very focused on that. So while we have the best comp plans and the best ways for agents to generate wealth and earn, we also have the best tools. And more importantly, I would say have the best tools to help you be successful in real estate. Welcome back to the LPT All-Stars Realty Radio Show. I am your host, Betsy Tinervin. And for anybody out there with LPT, anyone wanting to be a realtor, anyone wanting to jump into real estate, I have the one and only Stacey Conti here today. Hello. And for everybody that knows Stacey, check out her Facebook, check out her Instagram. She is the queen of short-term rentals. She's currently renovating a massive project in Daytona. We're going to touch on that because she's jumping full full two feet in with her hotel boutique style renovation. So Stacey, in the first segment, we, we kind of went over your life. <laughs> who you are as a person. I think that Stacey is just super humble. She is nice to everybody. She's pleasant. She has a smile on her face. She eats very clean. That's something you didn't mention. It's very important. It's very important. Stacey is like the healthiest, like she just, her vibe, her aura, she's just one of those people that's amazing to be around. So fast forward, you inherit these townhomes, you jump into real estate, you meet me, you kind of touched a little bit on the importance of having an agent. So then you kind of started to like build this team, right? And for you, you self-manage all your Airbnbs. But how long, because I can't really remember how much time has gone by, from when you jumped into real estate, kept your corporate job till you quit. What was that time period? That was about three and a half years. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. for anybody jumping in, basically going, hey, I have to have some type of residual concrete income, that's okay, right? Yeah. I mean, it, really, I think the smart thing to do is to start building your real estate portfolio slowly while you're still working because you can. You know, you work 40 hours at a job. You have other time to start building a portfolio, especially if you have property management. But take that time to learn as much as you can because there will be you'll get to a point if you continue to grow where you have to, you only have so much time. So you have to give something up. So yeah, you have a 12 inch plate. Every time you add something on the plate, you got to take something or mm -hmm. you're never going to give a hundred percent to it. But I think for people out there that think, well, I can't flip properties or I can't be an investor. I don't have the capital. I don't have the time while they're working full time. Those are excuses. 100%. Those are excuses. Cause you did it. Three kids full-time job, mm -hmm. managing a house. Yeah. You make time for the things you want. And I, I would challenge people that say that, are you going out partying? Are you, you know, are, are you going out to the club? Like your, all of your time is not, you can allocate your time in so many different ways. If you have kids, bring your kids, you know, I, I bring them. How to many properties did I show you multifamily where we had the kids with us. Yeah, probably most of them. <laughs> and we just made it happen. Yeah. I, I know that I was the agent and for all you agents out there, you really have to get to know your customers, what's important to them. So like I brought snacks 
and I knew that Stacy had like rules, no sugar, health, <laughs> waters. So I remember I would have stuff ready for the kids. There was times where I would sit in the car with the kids and she would go in with the other agent to the property because <laughs> we couldn't have three kids running around. We had tenants in there. <laughs> so I think that it's great that you also support people in this industry. I know that even now you're extremely educated in the real estate world and I still write all of your contracts. Yeah. Yeah. And you call me, hey, can you review them? You have let other people on my team, like show properties. Your sister has bought her first Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. So today I really want to talk about in this segment, you had the properties, you dove into short-term rentals, you started kind of dibble and dabbling, but like short-term rentals kind of has this like bad rap, right? Like everybody knows about long-term investments. Everybody wants to know about short-term rentals, but I feel like they get scared with the risk versus rate of return. Yeah. And I think you can bring kind of a peace of mind to realtors that one, want to sell short-term rentals and two investors that want to dip into that market because of how we look at the exit strategy. So can you just talk about when we find a property that we know our ideal scenario is to make it a short-term rental, how we kind of mitigate risk? Yeah. Well, when you're looking at a property for a short-term rental, a, you have to have an agent that's going to do a lot of the homework for you as far as making sure the property has the, the proper zoning. You wouldn't believe how many deals come across my desk and they advertise Airbnb. And I know it's in an area that, or a town that does not allow Airbnb. So po properties are being misrepresented by licensed agents that are, are probably don't mean to be misinformed, but they are. And they're actually on the MLS like that. I, I've seen all kinds of stuff. It's and so all the agents out there, especially our LPT people, what we want to do is we want to have some classes. And I think Vince and Ellie are going to host those classes where Stacey's going to come in and do big time trainings on short term rentals. And myself, I'm going to be a presenter. I'm going to ask Vince and Ellie to jump in as well, because we want you guys to understand the proper way to list some of these short term rentals, because there is a way to do it. Correct, yeah. Stacey? And you have to, like, the underwriting on the property is everything. So I think a big mistake people make is short-term rentals can be very emotional. So people a lot of times buy short-term rentals as their second home. Or, you know, they really want a luxury oceanfront house because it looks really cool to post on Facebook. And they like the decorations and the names on the doors. <laughs> so you really have to take the emotional piece out of it. Now, on the flip side, I like to vacation at all my short-term rentals. They're places that I would go. But at the same time, there's places I really want to go or properties I really want to buy, but the numbers don't work. So I'm like, as amazing as that view is, the numbers don't work. So for me, it has to be a twofold. It's an investment first. So if you're buying it as an investment, you can't get pulled with the emotion of this property is so pretty or the view is so great. Like the underwriting has to work and you can't force it to work either. Like you have to run accurate numbers and, and that's something we we'll start with analysis. So what we do when we look at properties, and this is how I train my investment team and all my realtors, and this is what I do with clients like Stacy and other people, I evaluate different exit strategies. So the first thing that we do when we find a property that we want to transform, if it has a long-term tenant into short-term rentals, is we're automatically gonna look at the short-term rental income at 50%, correct Stacy? Yep, I, I like to do everything conservative. So 50%, you should blow that out of the water, but in case COVID, you know, all these outside things happen, you're safe at 50%. Then what we also do is look to what we can get for long-term rent. Right. As a backup, the property has to underwrite with long-term rents covering the debt. So we reset the taxes, which that's something a lot of agents don't do either. Most agents, like the 90% <laughs> except our LPT agents of course exactly but what we do is we got to reset the taxes so if the property you know the previous owner had bought it for 250 now you're paying 575 you need to look at what those taxes are going to be you also need to get an insurance quote an accurate one those two things can kill your deal so I've been presented with 
properties and they keep the taxes the same and they keep the insurance the same. Now, these owners could have owned the property for 20 years. Like a couple of those insurance quotes, what they what the owner was paying to what we got. Well, quotes, and they also didn't have that it was going to be a short term rental. So right. as you know, owning short term rentals. Exactly. You got to speak with your insurance rep, make sure you have proper liability and then also loss of rents in there because mm -hmm. we don't know what procuring cause could happen that might cause something to the property. Again, just like we went through with COVID, you want to make sure you have the loss of rents there. So first we look at it as a short-term rental and what our ultimate goal is at a 50% income ratio. Then we're going to underwrite it as a long-term tenant and it still has to pay all of our bills. And then the third way we're going to look at it is if we're not making anything, like in what the cost is. So if you're physically taking your family there, if you're physically vacationing there, can you take on that expense and are you okay with it? Mm -hmm. So when you look at those three exit strategies, I feel like that's what makes you phenomenal in the short-term rental game and what makes us good agents when selling these investments because it gives you some protection and it mitigates the risk factors. Yeah, Absolutely. And that is what a true job of an investment agent is supposed to do. And so for all the LPT out, agents out there that want to learn, for anyone that wants to learn about LPT or evaluating short-term rentals, we're going to go into in-depth deals. And I believe, Stacey, we're actually going to hand out deals that we've done, how That'll we've, un fun. How we've underwritten fun. them. And we're not going to give all the secrets away on the radio, but I believe the agents are going to take with them these case studies, correct? Yeah, I mean, that's you have to study like the the actuals and learn from what's gone right what's gone wrong and i would even challenge to have some agents bring in some properties that that they've sold and let's walk through them and see or um, potential deals they want to sell yeah yeah perfect i think that would be great I also think for anybody out there that's interested in jumping into investments, you know, Stacy is a leader in this industry. She's coming out with a couple courses, which we're super excited to announce within probably the next 60 days. Again, she's going to be in office doing some live training. So how would someone find you, Miss Conti? On Facebook, Stacy Conti, S-T-A-C-E-Y, Conti, C-O-N-T-E. And my number is 904-563-3462. You still have two live segments with Stacy Conti, the short-term rental expert. Tune in, download the iHeartRadio app, and we will catch you after the break. The biggest win, I think, with the dual path and having these two models is that now we become a brokerage for everyone. No matter where you are in your real estate career, or what your goals are today, maybe today you're not interested in recruiting or having a team, but then one day you wake up and you are. Well, if you're at the wrong brokerage to do that, you're locked in. Where in our model, we're not holding anyone hostage. We're not tying anyone in. You can move between the different comp plans and have that success and really achieve whatever your definition of success is under one brokerage platform being LPT. Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am your host, Betsy Tinnervin with Tampa Bay Investments. And I am truly honored today because this show is about giving back to all of our LPT agents. And we have an amazing guest for all of our listeners, all of our customers, all of our clients, and all of our agents. I have Stacy Conti on the show today. She is a short-term rental and boutique hotel investor that started from scratch day one. I'm so blessed to have her here today. The first two segments, if you missed out, you definitely need to rewind, replay in your car while you're doing laundry, while you're in class, pop those earbuds in. <laughs> if you want to block anybody out, this is great content. We talked about how she started in real estate, freshly divorced, single mom, really started with a little bit of cash, just inherited some properties and what she's doing today to become an investor, how she worked a full-time job. She also talked about the importance of having an agent on the buy side and the sell side. And then she walked us through mitigating risk when buying short-term rentals. So now it's like the million dollar question, Stacey. Everybody hears about Airbnb, VRBO. Now we even have some of these smaller like midterm rental sites with like the, the nurses and traveling nurses, virtual workers, et cetera. But I want to get into the nitty gritty without giving away too much because I know you have your course coming out and then I know you have your class that you're doing for all the LPT people. But let's get into some myths about just the Airbnb platform and what you like, what you don't like and some stuff that you've overcome. 
So if you can start from the moment that you buy an Airbnb property, how do you set yourself apart from people and then hit those goals that you and your agent have analyzed? Mm -hmm. Where do you start? Well, the first thing is you need to have like a plan to get open. So all of my long-term to short-term rental conversions, I set a very aggressive goal of setting up the property. So like in order to put your property on Airbnb, it has to be fully furnished and decorated. Um, what could happen if you have a bad picture on Airbnb and that's the first presentation? So Airbnb is all about marketing, right? So it's a lot of people talk about, you know, I bought an Airbnb. Well, you bought a short-term rental. Airbnb is your marketing platform. Even when talking with lenders, the way that they can misinterpret Airbnb versus like the motel I have, it's a motel, it's zone motel. But they're like, well, you know, they don't want to lend on it because it's an Airbnb. I'm like, it's a motel. It's marketed <laughs> on Airbnb. <laughs> You know, Correct. I wish I owned Airbnb, but I don't. I own a motel that's marketed on Airbnb. So it's a marketing platform. So anything to do with marketing, like it's all about the presentation. It's all about your pictures. It's all about the way it's presented. It's all about your title. You want to get people's attention because if people click on your listing, it helps your listing get more views. More views means more bookings. And then comes in the review aspect and some intricacies of how to set your listing up so you're ranked higher, which we'll go over in the course. But and I think that's something you're going to talk to agents about because I think what's important as an agent, and especially for like all the LPT people, I think that when you're dealing with clients that want short-term rentals, in order for them to be successful is... As an agent, we kind of have to map out part of this plan. Yes. So part of what your course is going to do for these agents is going to give them some things. Like I think you're going to give a cheat sheet yep. of like some critical items mm -hmm. that they should have. So how cool is an agent if you're selling a short-term rental to say, hey, I have connections. I know Stacey Conti. I vetted these things out. Here's a cheat sheet. Here's some items you should buy. Because I think that you also do it really cost effective. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong. Yes, yes. I, I don't have any like luxury type properties. They're comfortable, nice properties, but these are not, you know, luxury, high end furniture. And you prepare for things to get broken. Exactly. You cannot be emotionally attached to your couch, a picture on the wall. You have to say if all of this stuff gets destroyed, it's replaceable. Like you have to really the one of the number one things when I when I see how short-term rentals go bad for owners is when they're not operating like a business. So everyone has to Do like, you get mad when someone wipes makeup on the wrong towel? That's like my, like, I see so many Facebook posts, like, what do I do? This person used my white washcloth instead of using the black makeup washcloth. How much should I charge them? It's like nothing. Okay. The washcloth was like a dollar. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is the cost of doing business. So you, you have to operate your, your business like a business. You know, Hilton doesn't add on a fee if you get makeup on your washcloth. And that's who you're competing with. You're, you know, that's, that's. And I think that you are a super host for sure. Mm -hmm. And about how many reviews, where do you stand review wise? And why do you think you have that ranking? Actually, I got to look. It's either 200 or 300. There's quite a few. A few. Let me look. But Where I think I'm it's at. because you're not saying nasty things to these guests. Like you kind of have like in sales, and I feel like you know this from Alcon, I know this from real estate, is you have to have an out-of-body experience. So you want to be looking at your booking and the experience for the guests as if you were traveling to that destination with your family or your significant other or your girls on a trip. You want to provide that experience for them, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and you have to put yourself in, for example, hotels are our competition. So if you go to a Hilton and you complain about your room, something wasn't cleaned properly or whatever, whatever your complaint is, does the person at the front desk get an attitude with you and, and tell you that argue with you and tell you that you shouldn't think that and you hurt their feelings. No, they, they're a professional, they're trained by corporate and they handle it professionally. So you have to make sure that you're managing your business like a business. You're I know I see this owner. banter back and forth says on these social media posts, 
talking so about their ridiculous. guests. It's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. And it's like, could you imagine going to like a Best Western, Western or a Comfort Suites and having the manager like speak to you like that? It's it's crazy. And I, I, I think that that's a big miss in the market because short-term rentals and Airbnb – their name is going to get affected if hosts do not act professionally. So that's a... And so that's a big piece of advice that mm -hmm. you have anyone who is currently hosting short-term rentals, realtors, especially LPT agents that want to sell short-term rental investment properties to people is to know that your client is now building a business. They are a business owner and they need to operate it as a business. Yep, yep. Leave the emotion out. <laughs> so you're a super host... You definitely have a niche, and I know you've made a super name for yourself in how you decorate. So don't give away all the tips and tricks because we want all the agents to come to the class. <laughs> we want everybody to come in. LPT is going to host this in Tampa, big short-term rental course. But talk a little bit about what makes your space pop and how you create the experience. Well, that's what it's all about is the experience. So that's what sets Airbnb apart. That's where Airbnb is really investing, where they're branding their company. It's about the guest experience. So it's not just about having a comfortable bed and a place to sleep. It's about from the minute the guest walks in, it's it's an experience. So whether it's an experience by it's a unique stay, like uh, a, a yurt or a, a glamping tent or it's a unique stay where it's a, a kid friendly very because i think that you have theme. a custom arcade games yes. at your newest motel with wall murals to match yes yes so each room is themed and there's custom arcade games i think it's like 2000 video games and the old school games so it's really cool I'm not a gamer, but gamers think it's cool, but it's all about the branding. So it's branded with our Beach Glow In logo. I have canvas wrapped logos around the room. So everything is about but it's inviting. branding. It's fun. It's inviting. It's like, hey, you're on vacation. And this happens to be in Daytona Beach, correct? Yeah. So I'm, I'm not oceanfront. I'm not ocean view. So I'm competing with ocean front ocean view rooms so how am i going to be different so again going back to it's all marketing if you want to get bookings when you're not equal i'm not ocean front ocean view i would either have to drop my price and make it a price play which is not you don't win in business by that strategy so i need to find a unique differentiator so my unique differentiator is going to be the millennial family that wants to bring their dog they want to travel with their dog they have kids they want their kids to have a good time parents will spend any amount of money on their kids i know because i do it so having a vacation where your kids go and the room is like decorated with gummy bear wallpaper and they have video games to play and they can bring their dog with them you could still walk to the they're beach. gonna right pick that the over a beach view and it's all Instagrammable. So any picture that you take there, it's an Instagram picture. Like there's wall murals. But where do they or... find you, Miss Conti, on Instagram? I'm developing underscore Airbnbs. I'm more active on Facebook though. So all of my content and is And how on would Facebook. someone find you? Stacy Conti, S-T-A-C-E-Y Conti, C-O-N-T-E. And stay tuned, all LPT agents, anyone listening out there that wants to be a short-term rental investor, we are going on our final segment to take you to the boutique hotel journey. Stay tuned. Come back after the commercial break for the LPT All-Stars radio show. Welcome back to the LPT All-Star Radio Show. I am your host. Happy weekend, friends. We're so glad that you tuned in. I'm happy to be back COVID-free. Betsy Tenervin with the Tampa Bay Investments team. Honored to have Stacy Conti with me today. 
She is the short-term rental expert, and if you did not have a chance to catch segments one through three, you need to rewind, replay. It was amazing for any agents out there looking to sell investment properties, short-term rentals. You cannot miss this content. This content people pay hundreds of dollars for, and we're providing it to all of our LPT agents. We're going to do in-classroom, in-house training, I believe on September 3rd. Correct, Stacey? Yep. In Vince and Ellie Lambert's office in Tampa. All LPT agents can come. Outside agents can come. We want to welcome you in. We're going to walk through short-term rental analysis. We're going to walk through some construction, hotel analysis, and boutique hotel analysis. And we're also going to walk through some tips and tricks of owning short-term rentals. I wanted to talk to agents for a second because I know the biggest question that we get asked a lot, Stacey, and you get asked a lot, is how can I invest in real estate? And what's cool about how I was taught when my dad didn't have any money as an agent, he would have commission on a deal and then he would roll in his commission to potentially the buyer so he had equity in the project. Oh, that's so cool. And I think that it's cool for people to know that you don't have to have suitcases full of money Mm -hmm. like people have asked you for in the past. (laughs) But that there's ways to raise capital. And like if people want to talk to Stacey and I about that, we're always available to do that. This last segment, I think it was cool how you touched on Airbnb as a marketing platform. You gave some tips and tricks. But after you kind of mastered the short-term rental space, and just for everybody out there, she kind of dove into Fort Myers a little bit. Then you tapped into Indian Rocks Beach. And then the latest and greatest was Crystal River, Florida. That one is staying booked. And it was actually booked before you closed. Yeah, yeah. So I I think I started touching on this, but I always set like really aggressive times to open my property. So like I'll close and I'll be like, all right, we have a week to get it up and running. And, you know, I'll get a booking for the property. So like the pressure is on. We have to get it done. And we always do. I did think of like a really something I want to talk to agents about though, is you need to be the consultant for your buyer on these properties. Like you need to be the expert on how to market them. You need to be the expert as to how to get them started. Because if you can hold their hand through that process, you're going to build a long-term relationship. You're going to set them up for success. They're going to tell their friends and family about you. They're going to buy more properties from you. And there's just sometimes such easy things. Like we've talked about this. For some reason, these properties at the beach, they all look like grandma's furniture. So there's like weird, couch, floral, wicker, ugly stuff. Yeah. And as the agent, like use that to your advantage when you're negotiating. But then tell your client like, Hey, these are some easy, we don't need to do a a rehab on this property, but if we just pick out some new modern furniture and take some professional pictures with good lighting and change up the color scheme, uh, it's a very inexpensive way to really remarket the whole space. And again, it's all about your marketing and your pictures. So you change a couple pieces of furniture out and you change a couple of pictures on the wall. Well, like you said, it's running a business. It makes all the difference. It's running a business. So I think one thing that you can definitely touch on as well is like what we do when we're looking at marketing and Airbnb is we shop our competitors. Now that you've kind of mastered this Airbnb stuff, and I know this is going to be part of the course as well, and I think this is phenomenal for any agents out there selling investment properties, then you dove into the hotel space. Mm Mm-hmm. And so I remember I was the agent representing you on the hotel in Daytona, and I went up and down that strip to every single hotel on that strip. I secret (laughs) shopped. I said I was going to stay at the ones that were renovated, and I asked when they were going to open. I talked to their managers. I went to all of, like, kind of the crappy ones and asked them what their vacancy rate was, all of those things. And I think that with that being said, you do that on the buy side, but you also do that on the after the startup side. So we also had to look at what your competitors offered. And that's why you went with the video games and that's why you went with the themed rooms. And then also a huge touch that I think is just going to be awesome is what you're going to have in your parking lot at this hotel. Yeah. So this is really cool. I took the, uh, the previous like traditional office of the motel because I'm doing everything 
virtual, so there's no human touch points for check-in. So I took that whole space that was a previous office and converted it into a bedroom. It's actually the ice cream room. Of course, so it's going to have bunk beds for kids, and it's sprinkle wall mural, sprinkle video game. It came out adorable. But income wise, what did that do for you? Because you that maximized income. more heads and beds. So now I took a like studio, a large studio, and I connected it to the office. So parents could sleep in the main room and then have their kids, you know, probably three kids comfortably in that office space. So now I went from targeting just a couple to targeting a family that could come. There's a full kitchen in there. It's like a very comfortable space. It's actually my second favorite room, but it, it, you have to look at all the different ways that you can generate income. But getting back to the parking lot, since there's no office for an office worker to be stationed at, I'm having a food truck on site. So I'm going to have my cleaning team, my but It's my not just team. a normal food truck. Talk about the coffee. So, you know, like this I'm is a back to the experience. Lover, and when you're in a motel and you can wake up and literally you can walk to the beach, now you can wake up and walk to your food truck, get coffee, get pancakes. They do all kind of fun like frappuccino type things. That's I don't so fully awesome. support, you know, but some people like that on vacation, <laughs> but it just enhances the experience. And, then and I believe that is, she's a young entrepreneur, correct? Yeah. Yes. She's, I don't know how young she is, but she's young and uh, female owned business, but she's going to act too as like an extension of the brand on site. So if someone has a question, they don't know how to turn on their TV or they have a maintenance issue, there's a touch point. So the guest feels like there's still someone that they can talk to about their issue. So basically you saved in labor operating cost, you added more of an experience for your guest, and then you created boots on the ground in the city, in the hotel you owned, just by having that coffee food truck there. Yeah. And there's like, you can't park your food truck on that, on A1A, you know, right. you can't park it on the beach. So there's a, a reasonable demand for food truck spaces where someone can park their food truck and sell out of. So it created a nice alignment with a local business owner to be able to park on a main road and, and run their business. So how scary was the plunge going from single family or duplex, triplex, short-term rentals to 12-room boutique hotel? So, okay, think about it this way. If you have a single family home that you take from a long-term rental to a short-term rental, there's a process to that, right? You you figure out how to do that. You figure out how you're going to decorate it. You figure out how you're going to get the tenant out. You you go through the whole process. So then if you do like a small residential, like a, a triplex or a quadplex like I did, you're doing the same thing, but either three or four times. Well, taking the jump to a motel, it's again, the same thing is just on scale. So if you get the process down, scaling becomes easier because you're not reinventing the wheel. Like if you could figure out how to do a single family, you could figure out how to do a 12 unit. It's the same process. It's just in a greater scale. So there's I think more the moving big, pieces. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I think a big part too that like we really want to touch on in this class that we want to provide for real estate agents and potential people buying these properties is the financing piece. Mm -hmm. Because I know- That's huge. We're almost out of time with our segment today. You've given us so much great information, but I know that that's going to be a big part of this class. And I did kind of leave that out intentionally because people pay a lot of money to get to gather this information. And we're really blessed to have Stacy come in and, and share all the knowledge with all of us LPT agents and realtors in the Tampa Bay community. But the financing piece we're definitely going to touch on in the class because how many times have we heard can't do it because it's not seasoned. And so we do these analysis a certain type of way. We're strategic on how we get the long-term tenants out. And then we go in hard. And I think for this hotel, you called a hundred lenders a day. I, at least I was, I, I swear for three months all day long calling potential lenders. We're unfortunately out of time with Stacy today. And There's I want so much more to go over. I know. <laughs> and I want to make sure that everybody knows like how they can find you. So on Facebook, Stacy Conti, S T A C E Y Conti, C O N T E. And go ahead and give them a number to text 904 563 3462. 
And we are honestly like super lucky to have found each other for all the agents out there. I hope our story was inspiring to you because it really came from one real estate transaction and I wasn't even her agent. And I'm never selling that property. We're going to teach that class. Stacy's going to be there to teach that class at Vinta Curie and Ellie Lambert's office on September 3rd. Don't miss it. We'll have a Facebook sign up event. Thank you, Stacy, for being with us. And we will catch you guys next week. Signing off, Betsy Tenervin, LPT All-Star Radio. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast, powered by LPT Realty, real estate reimagined. We hope this episode motivated and inspired you. And don't forget to rate and review us. Thanks again for listening to the Raw and Real of Real Estate podcast with Betsy Tenervin.